Um, so again, I do thank you for having me at the, this meeting, a really a, a very good meeting. And, and I think as we start off and talk about the economics of CTO devices, it is amazing to me how little we as a group of interventionalists know about the costs of the procedures that we do and the cost of the devices that we use. It's also amazing how uh, little leeway we will have in the future as there is greater and greater and greater economic pressure on all of us to make sure that we do things uh, in the most economic manner that we can. So we've already talked about CTOs a lot. Obviously, they, treat, they take longer to treat than do stenoses. You get more radiation in the process. Uh, typically, they require more expensive equipment. We're going to talk about the cost of some of that in just a minute. Uh, and the chance of a failed procedure is also higher. So this has led to kind of this dream of CTO devices. Can they answer some of the difficulties that we have in treating CTOs? They're designed to stay in the true lumen uh, during crossing, which should give lower chances for perforation. Uh, as uh, was mentioned by Nick, it then becomes a safe precursor for atherectomy. You don't have to worry about eating through the side of the vessel and having uh, extravasation of contrast. There is the potential that you can go just through the lumen uh, and no further into the uh, subintimal sub plane and therefore reduce the stented length. Uh, and they're also intended to shorten procedure time which should mean less radiation exposure and improved room turnover and hope, hopefully an economic advantage. You've already seen this slide. I'm just going to mention these uh, devices primarily from a financial and mechanical standpoint. You've already heard a great description of how they work. So the Viance catheter from Medtronic is essentially a mechanical screw to go through the lesion. This costs about $1,750, so that's the additional cost to the procedural equipment. The front runner, you've also seen, again, this works through a blunt intraluminal dissection mechanism, and this costs about $1,200, uh, including its support catheter. And again, these numbers are very rough because it will depend on where you are geographically, what type of arrangement you have with the vendor, but these are ballpark figures for what a device like a front runner will cost. We've already seen the reentry devices. I'm not going to talk about their mechanism, but they also will add to procedural cost. You can see that the Outback adds about a $1,900 additional fee to the procedure. Uh, you may wonder why they don't use Pioneer catheters very often in Germany. It's because they're $2,400 a pop. So they work great, but they cost a lot. Um, the Wildcat that you've already heard about adds about $1,300 to the procedure. Uh, and the Ocelot, with the addition of OCT, uh, adds uh, the cost of about $2,000 to $2,500 for the catheter alone. TruePath is interesting because of its mechanism and how it's billed and what its cost is. So uh, this is a diamond-coated distal tip, as you've already heard, rotating and essentially chiseling its way through the blockage. If you think about it, the mechanism of this is essentially the same as that of a rotablator or orbital atherectomy, uh, both of which obviously are uh, coded as an atherectomy device, but this device cannot be coded as atherectomy when it's added as a CTO device, and its list price is around $1,800. Uh, the crosser catheter is unique because the crosser catheter with the mechanism of oscillation and ablation of plaque can be billed as an atherectomy, which has huge financial implications. So this is more expensive than the other crossing tools at about $2,500, but the fact that it can be coded differently has big uh, uh, consequences for the reimbursement. So. I mentioned that the CTO devices were kind of this dream to get through uh, the, the lesions, but the question is, from a financial standpoint, are they more of a dream or are they more of a nightmare? So let's first look at how procedures get paid for. Obviously, you know that Medicare is the single biggest payer for health care services, and Medicare works on a fixed payment schedule. So for most procedures, which are done as an outpatient, where the, the bulk of procedures are done, if it's done as an outpatient procedure in a hospital, it is paid for by an ambulatory payment classification, or an APC. 
If it's an inpatient and few patients qualify here, it's under a DRG or a diagnosis-related group. Uh, There is a fixed payment to the physician who performs the hospital procedure. In contrast, if there's an office-based lab, there is a fixed payment overall to the office-based lab. And then private insurance usually just follows Medicare's lead. So here are national average 2017 Medicare rates for SFA treatment. And uh, so the first group are the hospital outpatient procedures, then the hospital inpatient procedures, and finally the outpatient-based lab procedures. And so what you can see is, if you look at this top group with the hospital outpatient uh, uh, procedures, angioplasty gets 4,823. A stent increases the payment, as does atherectomy significantly. And if you combine the two, there's even more payment. If you look in the right-hand column, Physician payment is linked to the type of procedure with atherectomy codes giving the highest reimbursement to the physician. We won't talk much about hospital inpatient. Uh, Basically, the level of severity of the illness and complications increases the reimbursement. We can't really go into detail of that here. And then in the office-based lab, where the physician's payment is included in the total overall payment, you can see that the reimbursement ranges from $3,800 to simple angioplasty to $15,000 with atherectomy and stent payment. So what you can clearly see is that if you have the opportunity to add an atherectomy code, you now have the possibility of increasing the payment to the facility or the office-based lab substantially. Really important point when you're considering CTO devices. Because if you look at the mere presence of a CTO, it has no bearing at all on reimbursement. Whether it's a stenosis or a CTO, you're paid based on the last slide, not based on the presence or absence of a CTO. And the use of a CTO device does not affect any of these payments unless it allows for an atherectomy coding. And as you saw, only one device allows you to code for atherectomy. So in almost all cases, the use of a CTO device decreases the profit margin, either for the hospital or for the office-based lab. Uh, Now, Subash is really, I think, the authority on this, and I don't want to cut too much into what he's going to be speaking about in the next talk, but he and his colleagues compared uh, a wire catheter uh, uh, treatment strategy versus dedicated CTO devices. This was in 1,362 CTOs in 1,000 patients from the XL pad registry. Important to recognize this is non-randomized, so there is a difference in patient type, and it included patients uh, who had primarily wire and catheter approaches, uh, almost four times as often as uh, those who had a dedicated CTO device. If you look at the overall initial procedure cost, you can see that when a CTO device is used, it significantly increases the cost of the procedure. If you look at the breakdown of the procedure, and again, Subash, I hope I'm not cutting too much into your talk, but you can see the blue bar at the bottom is the component of the uh, lesion crossing or reentry device. And you can see in the right panel, 40% of the cost was for the dedicated CTO device in the group where CTO devices was used. So a huge chunk of the procedure goes into that CTO device. So these devices were designed to stay in the true lumen, help you cross faster, turn over times better in the room. Uh, And so the question is, have they resulted in these things, the faster procedures, better turnover in the room, less personnel and less stented length? And it turns out they have not. So if you look at the wire plus catheter uh, group compared to the crossing device group, you can see that the duration of the procedure is the same. You can see that the fluoroscopy time is the same. And you can see that the contrast volume is the same. So they really have not uh, led to the dream that we were hoping for. In addition, the number of stents per case was actually higher in the CTO group, as was the number of balloons in the CTO group. So what can we conclude? The dedicated CTO devices certainly have their place, but they do increase procedure cost, 
they usually decrease the profit margin for the facility, and they do not reduce procedure time, fluoroscopy time, contrast use, balloon use, or stent use. Thanks.